Scripture said, He said, It is very good. Right? Amen. According to the second chapter of Genesis, the seventh verse, God formed man from the dust of the earth, breathing his mouth with the breath of life, that placed him east in it, God called Eden, and told him to till it and to keep it. So Adam was given the world when it was a that were just popped up in your head, Bible people. How paradise. There was nothing in the world that hurt my arm. Nothing. Anything that I wanted, it was there. Yes, yes. Or anything that man could have wanted or desired, it was there. So there was no reason for this to happen. For man to end up in a state. Warning, lacking, broken. Am I right? Amen. What could he have wanted that he didn't already have? Amen. 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 And I believe it is the same thing going on now. Jesus made a statement. He said, Take your thought with you. You must be Tell all which you're born. Stop making sense. You must stick with the Lord. And take up all for the mom. Yeah. But what do we do? Take it up all the Full of anxiety over all those things that Jesus told us not to be concerned about. Amen. And told us, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. Amen. But that's not the goal of most church folk. Amen. Even God won't help you with your motive. They may say, God can't do that. That you have to do. Amen. I think about the Apostle Paul, great, great man of God. I consider Paul my, uh, you might, I call him kind of like my, one of my mentors, but he's not on the earth. <laughs> one of my spiritual mentors in heaven. And I've actually been, people have actually said I was black Paul. Maybe that's because I have such great admiration for the Apostle Paul. 
But Paul said, fine, bro. This one thing I do. To get it on things that are behind. Mm -hmm. And reaching forth to the things that are before. Yeah, I press. Now, for those that don't know much about the Apostle Paul, he was a Pharisee of the Pharisee. A Hebrew of Hebrew. He was of the tribe of Benjamin, which made him one of the favorite tribes. Mm -hmm. And concerning the righteousness of the law, he was blameless. Mm -hmm. So, and Paul was a tent maker. So Paul had it going on. Amen. Mm -hmm. But he had one problem. When he was Saul, he didn't know Jesus. But he was Paul and him. He didn't know Jesus. And and he persecuted the church because of his, his Jewish convictions. But when he met Jesus, he said, those things that had been gained from me, I counted them as loss. And, and, and the scripture says, and doom, that I may obtain under the excellency of the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. But whether we realize it or not, we all must have reached that state at one time in our life if we are to become the children that God calls us to be. Amen. That everything that we thought would be gained in this world mm -hmm. has now become as waste material mm -hmm. to us. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it will always be a distraction. Hello? Amen. I think about when Jesus said, if any man desire to come after me, he said, deny himself. Mm -hmm. That means whatever they want. Amen. And without, you know, asking to look too far and judge too much, how many people do you think in the church world have actually, especially the United States of America, mm -hmm. denied themselves? Mm -hmm. There's no place you went so far to say that except you hate father, mother, and brother, my children be in your own life also, you can't know why be my disciple. How many people do you think have went that far? What I'm about to talk about tonight what I'm going to reveal tonight is a revelation that God has birthed in my spirit over 15 years now, about 10 years ago. <laughs> at a, at a, at, when I was a teenager that he's been working on trying to reveal to me and birth in my spirit all this time, and now it has almost come to full fruition, maturity. The revelation that the only thing that truly matters is the spirit of man, the condition of our spirit. That's why I said, Blessed is the poor of the spirit. What did he say belong to him? Say it out loud so I can hear you. The kingdom of God. And when Jesus said, it is the Father's good place to give to the kingdom, what did Paul say the kingdom was? Righteousness, joy, and peace. Righteousness, joy, and peace, and the Holy Ghost. He actually said before he said that, Paul, what did he say? It's not what? As you suppose. So it is not worldly pleasure. As we suppose. Amen. Are y'all here? Amen. That is why most people cannot be heart, soul, mind, and strength in the, the Christian or Jesus life. That's why. Amen. Because their motivation for being in the church is wrong. Mm -hmm. So, what would Paul pursue? The knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That was the prize, that was the goal. Mm -hmm. For you, Christine. Mm -hmm. Hello? Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. For you, Christine. 
So the scripture teaches us, according to the sixth chapter of the book of Romans, that when we got born again, and then we're going to go from that to the eighth chapter, and I'm going to jump over the seventh chapter, and we're going to get home and get the reading. Now, when you got born again, third verse, but if you have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Right? If we've been planted in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Now, there is a key ingredient in that verse. And you might ask the question, which you mean by that? If you look at this revelation, it said, if we have been planted together in the likeness of Jesus' death, then we will also be in the likeness of his resurrection. So in other words, us being transformed or being able to be in the likeness of his resurrection hinges on our having experienced the likeness of his death. I need to let that soak in because most people religiousize, religiousize it. <laughs> and all my efforts will be in vain for you, not for everybody. In order to obtain unto the Resurrection from the dead. And we're not talking about physical resurrection. We're talking about spiritual resurrection. God obtained unto that resurrection of the spirit. You must also have died to the old life. Amen. What do you mean by that, Dr. Cole? Well, he said in Mark, he was, well, he was quoted from the 34th verse. If anyone desire to come after him, let him deny himself. So, what would, what, what would you put a self? Me. Mm -hmm. So, in order for a person to receive that resurrection in life, self has to die. Amen. And if self does not die, then that person's activity and operation in the church is just religious. Are you following? Amen. Now, y'all have to. I'm hindered because I sense a whole lot missing. And I won't tell you what that is, but but, but with the teaching that, that has been poured out here, I should not be sensing that, that, that lacking. But I'm going to just go anyway. So, understanding what it means to be called minded, it means to be fleshly minded. It needs to be earthly minded. And to understand that a fleshly minded, earthly minded person cannot please God. And they cannot have life, they can only have death. Then we can see the connection to why, in order to get this resurrection life, we're going to have to die to self. Amen. Because self is fleshly, fallen. It's kind of like when the Bible said, speaking about uh, the first Adam and the second Adam, it said the first Adam was solely, the second Adam was spiritual, which is Christ. Mm -hmm. Most people don't meditate. And I'm, 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 I'm at the point where I'm convinced that this is it. We are in the last moments of the last days. The time that people had to get this right and get it straight and it grow in it, it's, it's just like a camel going out. And we're so close to it going out. So even though I'm still teaching this, I know only a handful will get it. And they're going to be the ones that rise up and know that God in the last day will do great exploits. So it's a heartbreaking thing and it is a uh, joyful thing to know that someone is going to get it because they will realize this is the last days. Amen. And, they will, and, and I hate to say this, but I'm not saying it. Sometimes people won't let go until they have lost everything to be holding on to. Amen. Did I say that right? Mm -hmm. 
Y'all copying what I just said? See, until people think about this for a minute, why would a alcoholic continue to drink alcohol when he start to lose everything? Why they don't stop? Why didn't they just, you know, the wife gone on the road. Children don't want them to do well. The job gone because they can't, you can't stay sober. And now they're about to lose the house, lose a little bit of money they got to hold on and still can't stop. But then after they hit rock bottom, the house gone, the money, the money gone, the house gone. And ready to make a change. Why did everything have to be help us Lord, have to be snatched away before they choose to let go of those things that were strong? Why couldn't they see it? They lose everything. The wife gone, the husband gone, the children gone. What's going on? Because when we desire something, when we want it so bad. No matter what anybody tells us, mm -hmm. it's no longer a desire. Now it becomes a position. Use mm -hmm. that word you want to use, mm -hmm. but you are no longer in control. Mm -hmm. It has now become your master. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, "Whenever well, you give your numbers unto you, mm -hmm. you become a servant thereof." Mm -hmm. It has now taken over, become your master, mm -hmm. and that's why a lot of people sitting in the church today cannot taste. The divine life because they could never let go of S E L L, which gave rise to something else being their master. Did you? So, in order to get this resurrection life, now let's look at the fourth chapter of the book of St. John. There was a woman at the well. I think she was a married woman. I think everybody remember that story, right? Mm -hmm. and I don't think the Lord did anything just by chance. I don't know. Here verse says, Then come a he to a seat of Samaria, which is called Sachar. Might not pronounce it right. Look it up and pronounce it either one. Near to the fossil ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Mm -hmm. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being weary with his journey, sat on the well, and it was about the six hours, which is about noonday, or the six o'clock in the morning, right? I think it's six hours, it might be six, six in the morning. There come up a woman of Samaria to draw water. Samaritan and Jews had no dealing with each other. Samaritan were considered half breeds. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. So here's the Lord asking this woman that Jews don't have to deal with because they think they curse. But her to either put her hand on the water and make it unclean. You follow? And so he asks her for a drink of water. Now she knows this because she's a she's a Samaritan. And that was it, they dressed with different. Because what did the Bible say? Skip over eight verse. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou being a Jew? As a drink of me, which I'm a woman of Samaria. For the Jews have no dealing with the Samaritans. Now I want y'all pay a close attention to this. She didn't have no right to this. The Jews have no dealing with Samaritans. She had no right to this. This is what's going to be transcribed, it's going to be offered that she's going to receive. She had no right. As far as flesh was concerned, they had no right to it. As far as a sinner is concerned, they have no right to it. You get it? You get it? Are you getting it? The Samaritans were not the covenant people. They had no inheritance, inheritance among Israel. Are you seeing the correlation? But here said the master. At the well, she comes up, draws water from the well, 
he asks her for a drink of water. And she says, we don't even have access to y'all. Why would you want water for me? Now why do? Temper. Jesus answered and said that if you do the gift of God. Then they said, do you know what the gift of God is? Do you know what the gift of God is? Well, let me say this to you. A lot of people think the gift of God is to, to my deliverance from the things that have been told me to harass me. I'm a real. A lot of people think the gift of God is him doing what I want him to do for me. That's what they think it is. And that's what they pursue. And often it, it troubles me how I look at people and, 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 and no matter how much I teach people, you can't believe in yourself. They fight on tooth and toe. Not always vocally, Rosemary, but in their heart, I can hear it. And some even go so far to get offended. They don't let it come on their face or out of their mouth, but I sense it, I feel it. And I'll be asking the question, why are you sorry piece of mess ain't nothing but dust? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tore from the floor up. Mm -hmm. And you want to believe in yourself? What in the world is wrong with you? I didn't keep that for myself. I don't want to judge you. I'm my feelings. <laughs> but it's the truth. Amen. You go look in the mirror. What do you what do you have? What is it about you that you want to believe in? All right. That you want to have so much confidence in. Mm -hmm. Please tell somebody please tell me. I want to know. Because I look at some people and I be looking at them, I can see. I don't know always, I don't always show me everything, okay? But there are times I can see their whole life. And I be saying to myself, what in the world have they got to hold on to? That they want to give it up for Jesus. Y'all my friend. So what kind of thought can we be careful what the gift of? What is the gift of God? What is it? Eternal life. Divine life. Mm -hmm. You can never say divine life. Divine life. And another word that Paul used, resurrection life. Amen. You know how to do it? You're involved in that? All right, let's read on. Let's see some more. Want to see some more? And who it is that said to you, give me the drink? Because because if we know who it is that says that, then we know he can give it to us. Y'all want to say? Thou wouldst have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Amen. Amen. So a lot of what we talk about, uh, third chapter book of uh, John, fifth verse, is talking about physical birth and spiritual birth. No. That verse is talking about spiritual birth, period. Amen. But it's two stages of it. And that's what they miss. So if you read the second chapter of the book of Jeremiah, you find out that Jesus, when he was speaking about Israel, they have forsaken him. They have forsaken the fountain of living water and hewn out for themselves cisterns that can hold no water. So we'll understand that the word Jesus, Logos, is that fountain of living water. You just told him, well, yeah, now I give you living water. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. But a lot of people don't understand this, so they, they, they spend their life stumbling and fumbling. And thank God, some of them finally, you know, at the end, make it. But we don't have to wait to the end to make it. We, we can enjoy Amen. divine life Amen. now. Amen. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Think about this. I, I know some people can't connect the dots because they don't know the words like we know they're not remember. When Israel traveled through the wilderness from Egypt to Promised Land, the Bible spoke about Christ as a rock that followed them through the wilderness. Y'all remember that? Remember when Moses struck the rock and water came out of the rock? Y'all were talking about Christ. So they had that little water with them all the way from Egypt to get in front of Egypt. And we're drinking them. Hello? So when we think about that, this is not relevant. And all we're doing is cutting ourselves off to this revelation, and we will never walk into this divine life. Christ was there then, and Christ was here 
when this woman was at the well, offered her the same water. Amen. She didn't give her a drink from that rock. That's what Paul said. Mm -hmm. They drink from that rock, which was Christ. And here he is again in the New Testament, offering that same water. Well, how come the Jews didn't have a trance to make what they didn't believe? They didn't take what they didn't believe. Now, I know it sounds like I'm rambling, but slap yourself in the face, because the Bible is not rambling. Amen. That is the key to everything about God. Belief. Did you hear that? That's the key to everything about God. Belief. That's why Jesus said all things are possible to him that believe him. That's why, that's why the Apostle Paul said, without faith, it's what? Impossible. Impossible to please God. Mm -hmm. Are you getting it now? Yeah. Something should be rising up in you. Mm -hmm. Something should be awakening inside you right now. So he said to her, you, if you'd have asked, you'd have asked, you'd have asked, he would have given you a little more. Now watch this. The woman said to him, sir, you don't have nothing to draw you. And the well is deep. From whence then have you this living water? So even though he was talking about water, living water, not natural water, she still thought he was talking about natural water. Yeah. Same thing today when they read St. John 3 and 5. Mm -hmm. They still think you're talking about being born of the natural water and the spirit. Mm -hmm. But he was not talking about no natural water and the spirit. He was talking about the word of God and the spirit. For so those are the only two things that he talks about in the scripture you being born of. Amen. But so many people miss that. Hello. Amen. Now watch this. Aren't you greater than our father Jacob? Which gave us the well. Where's our mind at, Saint? That's the whole person I'm reading the story. Where's our mind at? It's earthly. It's carnal. It's fleshly. It's materialistic. My spirit said, Paul right there. Oh, Paul right there. <clears throat> so if her mind was calm, fleshly, earthly, materialistic, mm -hmm. and that's why she couldn't come in what Jesus was talking about, mm -hmm. could she receive the living water? No, he had to get her to open up. Do they say he had to get her to open up? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Then he had to open that door, I'll come in. So he had to get her to open up. So what was the opening up? He had to get her to truly hear him. So I would ask you to look at your neighbor and tell him why I'm about to say that. Because we are saved by grace through faith. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Right here. Mm. Faith comes by hearing. And they come by to hear. To do a call. Mm. Oh, yeah. Okay. And you can hear with your head, but if you don't hear with your heart, you, you just, you just full of knowledge. Amen. Amen. You didn't get faith. Amen. In order to get faith, you got to hear with your spirit, man. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus said they have ears to hear, but they hear not. Mm -hmm. Eyes to see, but they see not. Mm -hmm. Because they're trying to hear with their natural ears to see with their natural eyes. Mm -hmm. Even though they had spiritual eyes and spiritual ears. Mm -hmm. But the natural man cannot receive the things of God. Amen. Amen. Why? Mm -hmm. Because they're spiritually discerned. Yeah. And they're foolishness unto the natural minded person. So we see. This same revelation revealed and unlocked before, right in action, played out in real life. Her mind was still calm. Her mind was still fleshly. Her mind was still materialistic. Her mind was still earthly. She couldn't understand what Jesus was saying because she was trying to understand it based on her. What? Her five cents of all feelings, all life. Amen. Hello? When it comes down to spiritual things, you have to be taught. Amen. Amen. Faith come by hearing. Yeah. 
it feeds God by the fruitness of preaching to save me. Amen. Did you hear what I just said? Amen. And the scripture said, how can they believe except they hear? Mm -hmm. And how can they hear without a preacher? Mm -hmm. She was too busy having a whole, I'm going to take a note, she was too opinionated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you notice everything that Jesus said she had something to come back with? Amen. Mm -hmm. See, God don't ever keep nothing from his prophets. Yeah. <laughs> you understand that? Yeah. So even though it's not much we can do, but just say what the Lord is saying, do what he say do. It don't mean we don't know what the prophet is. Yeah. So he had to do something to stop all these ideas, these opinions. Am I right? Amen. Am I right? Amen. You're dead talking about. Let's read a little bit more. She said, "Our mm -hmm. great and our father Jacob who gave up the well and drank himself there of himself and his children and his gout. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again." But will the drink of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, for the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up in everlasting life. Now you don't want to not thirst again. Amen. Hello? Amen. So he rephrased it. He referred to thirst. <laughs> Why was she at the well? Thirsty. 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 So he related back to why she came to the well. Amen. Y'all get me? And that piqued her interest. If I can get some water, but well, I never have to thirst again, I might as be walking up this hill. <laughs> Choking all this water back to the house. Even though it was still fleshly, even though it was still common by ideology, she could now relate to what he was saying. Amen. And he had something that could stop her from having to put out all that work. Amen. And she said unto him, and the woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not. See, she even told him. Why well, did neither come hither to draw? So yeah. tell me that what God is trying to show you wasn't true. That's what the scripture said. Now she relates it to her physical condition. Amen. I'm thirsty, and it's rough to keep coming up here and getting this water. So now he came in his living water. Well, so what's happening now? Desire has rose up yeah. in her. A longing has rose up in her. Ain't nobody broke the oh. What it gonna take? What it gonna take? What it gonna take? Fire. What it gonna take? Woo, Lord. Woo, Lord. Woo, Lord. <laughs> they that thirst and hunger after righteousness shall be filled. So if you don't thirst and hunger, if you don't desire, you don't long for it, guess what? You won't be feeding. You get it now? If you don't thirst and long for this divine life, you won't get it. Did you get it now? Okay, I hate to have connected eyes, but sometimes you have connected eyes. Everybody's in the chapel when I say what I say. But they won't. He got her finally to desire something from him. He finally got her to the place where she wanted something from him. Right. Guess what that means? Now she opened up to him. Yeah. Now she had opened up her heart. And now I opened up. Are you getting me? Are you getting me? So he says to the woman, uh, the woman that said, uh, uh, he said to the woman, uh, go and call your husband and come here. All right, go home, get your husband and come back. Yeah. Oh, he all in up in the night. Yeah, he was open a wide open. He's doing surgery. Heart surgery. <laughs> Jesus is a heart technician. <laughs> yes, he is. So a lot of people ain't never got saved. Amen. Because they never opened up. No. Oh, they got blessed. They got touched. Mm -hmm. But they never had heart surgery. Mm -hmm. Because they wouldn't open up. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. They're with many men. They set up in the church under the word and say somebody told the pastor. God revealed it was in their heart. All in their business. But they set their heart in their heart instead of opening up. And let God do surgery on them. And then when you get too tough on them because they're telling too much, they stop coming for a while. Because see, even this turns into a hammer that will break a rock Amen. when you keep hard. Oh yeah, it will. Yes. And they can't stay up under, so they stop coming for a while. Yes. And once the once the wants to feel like all that they need that pressure needs off, then they come back. Yes. But he didn't be an offer to prove. And God didn't need it. Because he doesn't alone. So he said unto her, Go tell you, call your husband and come here. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Y'all seeing this thing? I have no hope. But the reality of it was, she did have a man. Amen. But it wasn't her hope. Amen. Huh? Amen. For thou, and let's see what Jesus said. Thou has well said. Didn't what he said? Yep. I have no hope. For thou has had five hope. And he whom thou now have is not thy husband. Mm -hmm. And that saith thou truly. Yeah. So now she's opened up. Yep. She confessed. Mm -hmm. She's ready yeah. to hit this living wall. Yeah. She wants it. Amen. So she would be honest with it. Yeah. So she so he. So she said, the woman said, I perceive you are a prophet. Mm -hmm. Getting deeper, right? Yeah. He said, our father worshiped in the mountain, and you said in Jerusalem, play where men are to worship. Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, the hour coming when you shall be looked in this mountain, or yet in Jerusalem, worship the Father. Mm -hmm. See, this has been a problem. Hey, oh my TK, I'm a Lord. Lord. Oh, sorry. This is the wall that I run into for almost 50 years now. I keep bumping into, keep on bumping into. Everyone wants to put God in the box. Mm -hmm. Well, St. Peter and God box a long time ago. Amen. If he was ever in the box. Mm -hmm. And it's always the desire to live in man. But some people don't want him in there. Right. They want a God that they can leave somewhere. Right. They want a God that they can hide from. Yeah. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. They want the temple, the church building to be God. Yeah. And I don't know about the house. <laughs> yeah. So that they can leave God at his house yeah. and go home to their house. Now, look at my eyeballs, my mouth, my whatever, my face, my ugliness, or whatever. And he'll be real good. You can't have an eternal life without God. Amen. Amen. You got what I'm saying? Amen. So if you want to leave God somewhere, that means you're leaving life. Amen. Yeah. Amen. She no longer wanted to have to go back to a certain place Amen. and find the war. She wanted the water to be available to her all the time. Right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Woo! Speak Holy Ghost, speak Holy Ghost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She wanted an in internal well. Amen. So that she would never thirst again. Amen. 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 And we no longer have to labor mm. going through all, I've been messed up now, mm. all the religious activity, right trying to get just a little touch. Mm. And that's what most people live by. A little touch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Lord man both say, if you go not up with us, you will not go up. Because hereby shall the people of the land know that you are God. Amen. That you are with us. Amen. 
So Moses was actually saying, this ain't just another way to go on the Lord. So Moses was actually saying that there's no way the world will know you are God unless you are present with the brothers. So I don't want to go anywhere unless my God is with me. Amen. And Jesus made all that possible. Mm -hmm. That divine life could be manifested in us. Mm -hmm. That we didn't have to go anywhere where divine life was not. Mm -hmm. But we chose a lot of us in, in the church world, church entity and religion. So now the church has basically become a mockery in the world. Mm -hmm. Because there are very few of our brothers and sisters that are truly representative of the house of God. Because they, the majority of them thought that this was God, this building, those mm -hmm. edifices were God's house. Mm -hmm. God moved out of there. Amen. <laughs> he showed him, I read the story of Stephen to you, you'll understand. When, the, when Jesus, I told y'all Sunday, after the resurrection, the veil of the temple was rent. Mm -hmm. That veil between the holy of the holies and the holy place was rent in two. Mm -hmm. God moved out of there. Mm -hmm. That was a sign that, that Israel, that God was no longer living in the tent by a tent or in a building made by hand. Amen. And when he showed up, Stephen looked up, mm -hmm. being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up to all heaven and saw Jesus down the right hand of the Father. That was a revelation that he had moved somewhere else. Amen. On the day of Pentecost, that was a revelation he had moved somewhere else. Amen. But some people still can't get that, so they come to certain places, go to certain meetings, go to certain individuals, trying to find God when God wants to live in them. Mm -hmm. mm. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all get it yet? Amen. I hope so. Let's go to uh, Galatians, the fourth chapter. Let me read something there to you. Many, many, many uh, brethren want to live in the Old Testament, preach the Old Testament story. I can preach all this in the Old Testament. I y'all saw me connect up to the rock and the wilderness, mm -hmm. <laughs> being Christ. But they, they can't do that, but yet they still want to keep going back to the Old Testament mm -hmm. to play on people's sen sentiment and their physical condition. Mm -hmm. And have people only thinking about it's time out for that. It's time that we connect the dots. Time that we realize that all of this was symbolic of Christ. And I mean by connect the dot, help people see that why this happened was an example to bring you to Christ. Mm -hmm. So you can experience what Paul, I mean what Moses hid from the people. Read the third chapter from Second Corinthians. Okay, right? Let's look at this fourth chapter. I want to go to the sixth verse, but I'm going to start at the first verse and read down to the sixth verse. Is that okay? Amen. For I say that the heir, that's anyone that's in somebody's will, as long as they are a child, there is nothing from the servant, though he be Lord of all. Now, if you read that last verse of the third chapter of Galatians, you find out that we are heirs. But it says that under truth and governors until the time appointed of the Father. Even so, we, we, when we were true, when bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, Jesus, Yeshua, made of a woman, uh, in marriage bed, mm -hmm. made under the law, mm -hmm. to redeem them that were under the law. Mm -hmm. Why? That we might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are sons, God did something that does not happen to an adopted child. I've shared it many years ago, I'm going to share it again right here. That adopted child does not have the blood of his adopted parents. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say it in a different way. Adopted child does not have the nature of his adopted parents. Mm -hmm. That child still has the nature of his biological parents. And there have been proof of that in our generation when people love to do research. Amen. That they have actually researched a child's character 
tracked down their biological parents and found out that that child had characteristics mm -hmm. similar to a biological parent that they have never known. Mm -hmm. Nature. Amen. I'm about to lose it up in here. Amen. Living in your God we all oh, the explosive up in this house. Amen. You know, I was, I was sharing with you, they know this also, that there was a time Jesus said, the Bible said, that the power of God was present to heal them all. All the one person got healed. Amen. Isn't that yeah. That God's power is so awesome. You would think everybody, but do you remember I talked about that faith element? Yes, sir. Amen. And people say, well, it is present so so present, but it's so powerful that I can this didn't happen, that didn't happen. Well, whatever you tap into it. Amen. Amen. But you chose to believe mm -hmm. that God will force on you mm -hmm. what he said. Mm -hmm. Let him that has an ear. Hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. what you hear. Mm -hmm. uh, and not the hearer. Only that blessing they be, but the hearing and the do that blessing they be. So as long as you want to sit there well. <laughs> and not act on what God say, of course the power of God can be present and you not get anything. Amen. Like, ooh, yeah, ooh, glory to God. Ooh, save me, Jesus, save me from normal to God. Let me read on. So he said. That we have received the doctrine of sons, and because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into Amen. your hearts, crying, Our Father. That took us beyond just being adopted. Amen. Amen. You get what I'm saying? Amen. If you look at 1 Peter, the first chapter, go ahead, and the 23rd verse. Not only did God send the spirit of his son into our spirits, saying, Abba, Father, but based on what Peter insight into this happened, first chapter, 23rd verse, look what it says. Being born again, not a corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Did you see that? Being born again Amen. of the word. Well, who is the word? St. John 1 and 1. Jesus. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. Watch right this. And the word was God. Glory to God. Yes. So if we're born of the incorruptible seed of the word, that means we're born of the word. And, and without them being too vulgar, or too, too, too obnoxious to some people, uh, you all came from a seed. That's right. Thank you. Your physical body came from a seed. That's right. You got what I'm saying? Amen. So you sitting there trying to wrestle with this thing. No, no need of wrestling. Just use common sense. Amen. When they say you're born of the incorruptible seed of the word, that means you are begotten Amen. by the word. Amen. So if you're begotten by the word, then that means you're of the word. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. And when I refer back to St. John 1 and 1, the word was what God was God. So therefore, you are of God. They got the uh, God. God. Therefore, you're made out of God. God still. Your spirit, man, the real you, that if you've been born again, mm -hmm. is made out of the God still. Right. And I've said this so, so many times in the past, and I'll repeat it again, that, and often some people don't understand this, but I'm, I, don't, I don't understand it either. Okay. I got an idea, but just an idea. Have walked in the counsel of God and with the Holy Spirit in me, I got a little idea. Not full of comprehensive, but a little idea. If God broke off a piece of himself and put it in every one of us, that piece will still be God. Amen. Just as much as God, God. Amen. With the same attribute, same ability, the same, of, you know what I'm saying? So what we've done is, because we got a piece, mm -hmm. we think we need the big God to come down to get something done. Amen. You don't have to. Because the piece inside of you is just as much as the one up there yeah. or wherever there is. Yeah. So we've been trying to pray it down, pass it down, scream it down, holler it Amen. down, quote it down, and he came on the day of Pentecost. 
Glory to God. So why are we still trying to get him to come down? Hello, somebody. But he's right here. Why are we struggling so hard to believe that? Call me. But well, they look at I got ain't working. I need some more. <laughs> now, listen to what I'm about to tell you. Now, I'm recording to you. I'm not, if you want to read it sometime, go to 3rd chapter 18, 20 verse. Now, unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, yeah. above all. That you could ask or think by the power that's working in you. What could that power you do? Exceeding abundantly above all that I could ask. Thank you. <laughs> that I could ask. Look at that say, that I could ask. Thank you, Lord. So do I need that dad to come down? Nope. Of course not. Thank you. Because hmm. I have his nature, his spirit in me. Amen. So anything that he can do, his spirit in me can do. Amen. Lord. Lord. Lord, come there working. I told you earlier what the problem was. Bold. Bold. Motive. The woman believed as well. And she went to work. <laughs> she forgot about the work she came to get. Amen. Amen. Can y'all get that? Amen. She put the kingdom first. Amen. Take no thought for what you feel. Or what you should wear. He said, Gentile sinners seek after these things. Mm -hmm. But your father knew you had need of them. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. She forgot about the war. Mm -hmm. She forgot about she was thirsty. Mm -hmm. She forgot about wanting a man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All y'all itching for. <laughs> I'm going to say it one more time, all y'all itching folk. Amen. See, my itching family. You don't know I'm not going to take it. I said, come see a man. Amen. They told me everything that I ever did. Mm -hmm. And her, her ministry was so great that all the people in the town came. Amen. Then she said, now we believe it for ourselves. <laughs> Once they heard it for themselves, they believe it for themselves. Not because she came to go and show them to see a man. Are y'all hearing this? Amen. 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 You know why you stumbled in the front? Motor wrong. I listen to people singing that song about you to be in the all. They need all they need. Be lying. Yep. Yeah. Yep. He's lying. I'm telling you, looking at him, don't be lying. I don't even know why they be saying something. Yeah. They didn't try to work up. <laughs> but you can't get it that way. You got to be broken. Yeah. And it's sad that it takes so much for some people to end up giving up on themselves. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, self is a bad God. Mm -hmm. Self can't do it, but it's still a little bit. Amen. Amen. so much self can do. Mm -hmm. When we come to that realization, you think about this for a minute. The Apostle Paul had been knocked off his jacket. Mm -hmm. If Paul hadn't been knocked off his donkey, yeah. Paul would have still been wrapped up in religion. Yeah. Still killing Christians. Yes. But God had to knock him flat on his face. Yes. Y'all get what I'm saying? Yeah. Why do we have to get knocked off by a donkey mm -hmm. before we come to the realization we need Jesus? Amen. And it's all about him. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we're so grateful and thankful for the opportunity to break the bread of life to give the saints what you want me to give them, not what Paul's want to give them. I think that that word cannot be shaken. It will not be cast down. It will not be left. It will continue to rest heavily upon their heart. And I know that there will be a complete surrender. 
that their lives will be totally committed into your hands. That your perfect will may be fulfilled and established in their life. May you be all the honor, the praise, and the glory. In Jesus of Nazareth, your sure thing, my friend. They once said, Amen. 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 Again. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, Remember. Amen. The lust of the eyes, yes, the lust of the flesh, yes, and the pride of life. Yes, and what had that woman? What had that woman? At the well. Amen. 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 God bless you, preacher. Everyone, listen to the Bible book of YouTube. Let this word rest in your spirit until your home and your thirst to come to Jesus. That everything you count and lost, that you obtain with excellency of the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For that is the goal. That we become one with him. Amen. 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 And that's it. The Bible says that. Uh, what a man of love it is that the Father has told us mm -hmm. that we should be called the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but when we see it, we shall be just like him. And in that third verse, it says, He that has this hope within themselves. That's how you can tell when people got that hope, because they're constantly trying to get closer to God. Amen. Constantly trying to get closer to Jesus. They ain't trying to get nothing out of the Lord. They're trying to be more and more like Him. Because they're purifying themselves even as He is pure. They always know when people playing, and they do this and all this kind of stuff. I can name a few, but you know, I always can take it. Because everything else is important to me. They push everything aside. So, my daughter, Janae, was mentioning to me when I was on the way to church. She was talking about, I hear things and don't hear them, but I heard that because I think God won't be here. And she was talking about the songs that I choose to listen to. And if anybody pay attention to it, most songs I choose to listen to worship songs. Amen. You know why I want to listen to worship songs? Because I was with my dad. <laughs> he knows I know I can't sing that good. So I get right in with the mother folk and thank you and worship them with them. Hey. Hey. <laughs> I get what I'm saying. So I get right in there and worship with, with them. And he received that from me because he knew I'd be trying. Because I want to, if, if, if I could, I'd be in this seat right now. But I'm here for a reason. And until my reason is fulfilled, I can't go. Somebody might ask, how you believe like that? Now, how you don't believe like that? That's what you are. That's the question I'll be at, right? Because they ask the question. Why don't you believe like that? Believe like that. Amen. I'm telling you right now, I've been through a lot of things, but God has given me the victory. Amen. I ain't talking about that ain't no that ain't no statement of faith. I'm, it is faith that got me the victory in him, but I'm saying everything I'm going through, he gives me the victory. Amen. And if you know the next thing come along, guess what? He's going to give me the victory. How can you get it like that? Because he already told me he gave it to me. Amen. 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 So, so why get hung up in the in between? Keep it moving. <laughs> Y'all what I'm saying? Why get up in there? He said, he's giving me the victory. That's the problem, right? I can't get stuck on him. <laughs> why get stuck in the between? But that, the things you go through in life. Let's move on to the victory. Because you already told me to do it. I keep my eyes on the victory. Y'all heard the song, like, keep your eyes on the pride. You keep your eyes on the pride. Amen. And you won't get caught up in the going through. Huh? Huh? Preach the message one time. Contrary, we will blow. Amen. <laughs> you can be the perfect will of God, and contrary, we will blow. Amen. But what do you got to do, Pastor? Stay the course. That's right. This too will pass. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I'm here with this too will pass. Because the master is on board. Say, I'm sitting back down. I don't know who y'all be waiting on, man. I really don't know. But it's going to get on you one day. You're going to realize, you know why? Because this stuff is all in my head and ain't got my spirit yet. When it gets your spirit, you find out it will be hard to keep you sitting down. I'm just saying, hey, yo, wait a minute, I'll give you a minute. We're going to take a praise break in a minute. <laughs> but remember, Jesus, obstacle with the woman at the well, she had too many opinions. God bless you. So we're not, now we see y'all on Facebook, YouTube, Sunday, which is our homecoming. You're welcome to come, 508 South 9th Avenue, Dillon, South Carolina. We're going to start the morning worship. 
we will end the problem about one one o'clock, and then we go to fast about one thirty to two o'clock. We will be dining. We will serve. We have food. We need our break that they don't mess me up. We have food to eat, and you're welcome to come out and dine with us Sunday. This is our camp church anniversary, and we're looking for a good time in the Lord. Four o'clock, Saints came through. Four o'clock Sunday afternoon, Pastor Joe Wilson Amen. from Rock of Deliverance, Long South Carolina, he will be here with us. Amen. Amen. My best buddy. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Come smile on the Lord. We receive our best response.